joined here, pleased to be joined by General Manager for the Utah Jazz, Justin Zanuck, on Round Ball Roundup on utahjazz.com. Justin, thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks, JP. Happy to be here. So we'll get into the nitty-gritty of the moves that you guys made in the offseason, draft, free agency, trade. But an offseason where generally positive reviews, um, what was the goal after seeing what you did last season, achieving the best record in the league, and then exiting in the second round? Sure. Um, first of all, just another, a unique off season simply because of the short time uh, off from when we finished to when we were throwing it up and starting a, a full season this year. Um, so not a lot of time, even though we prepare on multiple timelines and throughout the season. I mean, look, to answer your question in a very simple way is you look for any opportunity every off season to evaluate what we did last year, what we could control, what we couldn't, and try to get better. So those opportunities present themselves in multiple ways and different timing and free agency, the tr uh, trades, the draft. And um, we came in with a plan and I think we largely executed that. Now a plan is still a plan on paper. And what we do know is that we have a, a very talented team that, that cares about each other, a great coach, um, great ownership that has a chance to advance. And our job in the front office is to collaborate with coach and evaluate those opportunities that come up and see if we can add add to this group that gives us an even better chance to advance farther um, and ultimately with the goal of winning a title next year. What is that communication up with ownership, Ryan Smith, his first summer in charge of the team and communicating that financial commitment that he'll have to make when you resign Mike Conley and you bring in different additions? Sure, it's it's constant back and forth. Um, you know, Ryan's energy, his resources, uh, his commitment to the team, his just general disposition is how can he help? How can he support um, what we're all trying to do? And so those conversations have been very aligned, certainly, um, we want to accomplish for him what he set out to do, and that's that's to win a title um, and to put the best team possible on the court given the opportunities that are out. And we are at salary levels that uh, have never been seen here with the Utah Jazz. So, you know, it's our job to deploy those great assets, you know, judiciously in a way. But, um, you know, the collaboration's been great uh, with Ryan, with Coach, uh, with all of our staffs coming together. and. Um, look, you know, we're in a great position right now. So those, those things, we just have to go out and, and do our jobs and continue to support the team and support coach and whatever he needs and look at opportunities. And then for them to, for our guys to play well together and have great health and some good fortune as well. Well, when they were all together during that regular season, number one overall seed, uh, Mike Conley makes that all-star team. What were you able to show him over those two years heading into the offseason to get him re-signed back with the group? I think you you show people when you have a chance to be with them. You know, he was here with us for two seasons. Just what you say that you're going to be about and then what you actually are about on a daily basis and what we committed to him just in a, in a daily thing that he would be part of a winning organization, a, a place where he's valued and cared about, not only him but his family. Um, I don't want to speak for Mike, but he, you know, his family's integrated very well here into the state and the city, just like my family has. You know, we're not from here, but you know, I call myself a Utah now because it's such a great place to live and and be a part of. And I think Mike's seen that. He got two years to experience that, and you know, the results on the court. We all want more and want to, you know, grasp that ring. And I think he saw that this was a great opportunity for him to continue to keep that window open and be with guys that he likes and play at a high level. Well, I think last year everybody was starting to understand how big of an adjustment was for him. He has to take a different route to work all of a sudden. He has to get into a different routine when he was driving 40 minutes in Memphis to where it takes him seven minutes in a commute. That's with traffic yep. to here. Um, those adjustments take time. How about the new additions? How do you see them adjusting to what the program is right now, speaking specifically of Hassan Whiteside, Rudy Gay? 
I think with those two guys, um, their roles are, are a little bit more defined. Um, they've seen a lot of different teams. Um, I think there's always a transition period. You know, we, we have a, a group of guys that are very connected and have been together. So our offense and defensive concepts, um, you know, they have some catching up to do, but they've seen a lot of different things. Um, they're both very smart and pick things up quickly. So I think their transition is going to be pretty, pretty easy. They also have a lot of people to help them. Um, and we figured out roles. Uh, for them that are, like I said at the beginning, very defined that, that I think can allow for a, a speed up and an adjustment that way. And they've been great. Uh, they've been a great, great in the locker room, obviously on the court. Um, I've been pleased so far. Even without uh, Rudy Gay playing on the floor, what can he add to that locker room as a veteran presence? Or uh, just his years of experience, his openness to his teammates, uh, his willingness and ability to lead and share and support. Um, Rudy was a primary player for a long time in this league. He's got, a, he's had a great resume, and then he's also been in different organizations where he's taken on different roles and, and excelled in them. And so this is just another role for him that he's completely capable and qualified for, and we're excited. And he'll be on the court soon, but every day that his presence in the locker room helps and elevates those guys. Trading for Eric Pascal, clearly he has that relationship with Donovan uh, dating back to their youth days. He comes onto the scene and plays a lot of small ball five. Is that something that you're looking for him uh, to provide when he comes on? I think for rotation? Eric, um, you know, we had an opportunity to add somebody that m might look and feel a little or plays a little different than, than what we've kind of had if you wanted to homogenize everything. Every player is different. I think Eric with his career too was, you know, he's still in progression of having his career and becoming a fully formed player. And this was an opportunity for him when we traded for him, for him to be in a different program, have a chance to be in our development program. And then for, for coaches, seeing how he fits, whether that's situational or, or playing rotational minutes or, you know, different things that it just adds another element for coach to use to optimize and how that plays out I think there's a lot of different things of how that could play out in the beginning of the season the middle of the season and then as we get you know ready for the playoffs that all of these guys that are new to our our group this year have opportunities to integrate and see where they fit and uh, but the whole goal I think everyone here feels like is to whatever gives us the best chance to win developmentally this has been a success story in Utah. You have Rudy, you have Donovan, you have George Niang even uh, to look at. A Joe player. Ingles. Joe Ingles. Every Royce O'Neal. So many. Uh, you could just spat off. For Jared Butler, he's coming into the team, very veteran related. How does he develop as someone who many say steal the draft? I think with, with Jared, look, the, as much as he's a, he's one of the most accomplished collegiate players ever would be able to win a title play four years most outstanding player his demeanor his character um plays and acts older than his years the nba is still a learning process and there's a, a, a few thing ways that you can learn in the nba and in our situation we have a veteran club we have championship aspirations um he's done everything to integrate i think there, there's ways to learn about how to win how to be a part of a group and all the things that happen that you know people don't necessarily see if whether his time is limited on the court you know we have some very good guards that he can learn from and a lot of his learning may come from watching and being staying ready um, to contribute in a situational basis could he be doing more for another team with different aspirations probably but this is a great way for him to integrate and be ready for his opportunity because there will be times during the season you know there'll be injuries there'll be you know rest days there'll be foul trouble and and being integrated and ready to contribute in whatever you're asked to from coach that's going to be the most important thing that he's he's going to learn this year how do you plan on managing those things injury and health being so prioritized for your team you saw how it how the season ended where there were injuries that come out but these players want to play. They want to be on the floor. How do you manage those two things of keeping everybody healthy for the playoffs while also seeing what's going on in the yeah, season? Yeah, look, it's, it's always being connected with your players. I think Coach does an unbelievable job and our staff uh, and with our health performance group to really communicate what 
you know, the larger goals at hand are, whether it's from a game or a game. And not that you're always going to have agreement, you know, like, like you said, players want to play and, and uh, we want to also be mindful of, we want to be playing at our best with a full roster and integrated and healthy when we start the playoffs. So part of that's in our control and that's where those discussions and having open and trusting relationships with your players, like I said, coach does an unbelievable job with that to, to get to the right solution that's best for them and for, and for the organization. What can we expect from this season where there's a little bit of a longer off season? Last season, I think that really stood out was that offenses were off the charts across the league most uh the highest uh field goal percentage from twos threes free throws heading into the postseason can we expect offense to be somewhat of the norm for the entire league i think that's a good question jp i i I don't i'm glad i have one of those (laughs) i don't think that there's something you're like yes you can expect a b or c in this season it is new for all of us with the short off season i'm not I think the the skill level of the players today in the NBA, you know, they've stood on the shoulders of, of the players before them, um, is just getting better and better every single year. Um, and you're going to see guys in the league that are coming into the league as rookies that have a skill set that no, not very many people would have or even think to have 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. So how does that apply? You have, you know, players that are bigger, stronger, faster, Uh, and more skilled so you know coaches are really good at making adjustments throughout the year but I think the the level of skill that you see in the NBA is only going to continue now how it's deployed by coaches or certain philosophies I think for right now that you know I think the you still have to have a winning formula you have to be good on both ends of the court at the appropriate times um, and have the right players and a little luck to be healthy to accomplish that goal. So I think you're going to see more of the same and you could see other teams continue to adopt a a different shot profile or try to try to improve that. The biggest indicator for that for me was seeing Dallas have that historic year two seasons ago and then seven teams surpass that in the next year. Offenses are just getting so evolved and, and so smart with all the coaches that are are tinkering with things and you have one right here that is right on the front edge of, of all of it. No question. I, I think any coach also would tell you that uh, the players that they have on their roster allows them to, yeah. to do that. Um, you can have the most intricate or clever offenses in the world and if you don't have guys that can put the ball in the basket, you know, it, it doesn't matter. So you need a combination of both. Uh, the league as a whole, I've said it before, is getting smarter. I think and players are getting smarter, more skilled. There's no real off-season anymore. Guys are in shape all year. They go into the lab in the off-season to get better. I think one thing that Coach has done a great job here and as a, a nod to our player development program that Coach has developed is you see the ability of players here to get better during the season as well. Right. So the expected leaps that you have for p- players in the off-season, I think you can see guys continue to evolve and even get better during the season. Are you more excited for the start of the regular season or Halloween? Definitely your the start family. Of the season. Your family. Uh, that's probably fifty-fifty with my okay. kids. Okay. All right. It's probably fifty-fifty. And you're dressing up as a general manager. Well, yeah, we play that night. So. <laughs> Justin Zanuck, general manager of the Utah Jazz, on Roundball Roundup on UtahJazz.com. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks, JP.